Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today what I'd like to go through is I'd love to show you guys how to improve your ability to kneel on the ground. And kneeling generally comes in two shapes. Um, we see the traditional uh, sort of kneeling and sitting back onto your heels, but then there's also the, the kneeling, the high kneeling, where you've just got one knee on the ground. Now, the reason why I sort of want to go through this is because clinically we see a bit of a misconception about not what kneeling is, but why it becomes a problem. And what, what sort of stems from that is this idea that there's a ceiling or that there comes a point in your life where you can no, you can no longer kneel, that you know, you're old enough or that your knee's worn enough, that it's just a fait accompli that's just gonna happen that at some point you just, it's okay if it starts to hurt to kneel. <clears throat> and hopefully what I can promote today is that there's one, probably two really simple things that you can do to improve how it feels to kneel. So if you're someone who likes to garden, if you're down on the ground a lot, if you're in any situation where kneeling is important, uh, you deserve to be able to do it. There's nothing abnormal about being able to put some pressure on your knee. There's nothing abnormal about kneeling and sitting back onto your heels, but it feels that way for a lot of people as we get older. So, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is why that is, and hopefully clear up some of those misconceptions and give some perspective behind what it potentially is and why it's something that you can get better at doing with a few simple things. And then towards the end of the video, we'll go through two really easy exercises that are really effective and really fast acting that will hopefully take you from someone who has a knee that hurts or that feels uncomfortable to kneel to someone who can tolerate kneeling more and more and more as you do those exercises over time. So, so if you hang around to the end of the video, hopefully there'll be some actionable pieces of information that you can take with you that if you do them with me during the video, hopefully by the end of the video, it might actually feel better for you um, straight away. Maybe not perfect straight away, but it, we should always expect to see incremental improvement if you're doing the work. So, so I guess the, the main idea that I wanna promote with this is I sort of wanna go beyond this idea that as you get older or as your knee starts to wear, that kneeling is a problem and that it's okay for that to happen. Um, because so many people have problems with kneeling as we get older, it, it's almost normal now to expect that kneeling is something that sort of washes away or drops off with age. Um, and it's not generally the case because we know that fundamentally that your knee shouldn't wear down just because. Just because you're a day older, just because you've been using it, life shouldn't make your knee wear down. It should only make it stronger. Uh, because that's what the body does. It adapts to challenges and stimulus. But the reality for a lot of people is that the mechanics and the way that you load your knee throughout your life tends to be the thing that chews away or eats away at those knee tissues and the joint and the patellofemoral joint and the knee joint itself to the point where we start to have some problems. So, so it's not age that causes a lot of these problems. It's imperfect mechanics that hang around and act on a knee over a period of time end up being a problem so if we can get at those imperfect mechanics and clear some of those up which we'll get to then we can realistically expect to either sort of halt a lot of that wear and tear or if you get at it early enough and often enough potentially prevent that from ever happening so so with kneeling it falls into this idea that there's more that you can do than you probably realize and we don't want to guess we don't want to promise anything we want to show you that you can hopefully do one or two things and then it's easier. And the more you do that, then the easier it will get. So, so the first thing, I guess the first concept we wanna talk about here is, we know that you've got your kneecap on the top of the knee, front of the knee, it sits at the, the front of the two, the two bones, you've got your tibia and your femur that, that create the, the main hinge joint of the knee. And what happens when we kneel, particularly with the, a kneel where we put some pressure straight through the knee, it's often the compression of the, the compression of those tissues that makes them feel sore. But what's interesting to understand here is that compression alone shouldn't be a problem. Um, if your knee's a bit grumbly, a bit worn, then obviously your buffer or your threshold for dysfunction is gonna be less. But in a perfect world, you should have a really strong tolerance to something or anything really. And pressure sh shouldn't necessarily on its own create a problem unless your buffer's already lowered because there's some dysfunction in there. So, um, but what we want to talk about here is there's a lot of tissue that attaches into the knee. So your quadriceps, there's nerves, there's a lot of connected tissue, including fascia, which can basically become tight. Now, if you're in a position where you've bent your knee kneeling, 
but you also have this really strong handbrake with this extra tension that's pulling slack out of the knee. Your ability to bend your knee comfortably and tolerate that position is going to be reduced because you're already pulling a lot of slack out of it. And then when you bend your knee, you're just tensioning that up further. So you're gonna increase the compression of the joint beyond what's normal just because it's already tight. So I guess the, the idea that I wanna promote here is that most people who have knees that hurt or don't feel comfortable to put direct pressure on with kneeling or can't even think about sort of kneeling back onto your heels um, without cringing, it's not necessarily that that position challenges the, any arthritis or wear and tear at the knee. It's that position exposes the tightnesses and the stiffnesses that are already there. So by feeding some slack back into the knee joint, we can improve your tolerance for those shapes. So, so the best exercise for this, and hold me to it, so the way that I want to structure this for you guys if you're happy to play along at home, is we want to do a test to begin with. So feel free to pause this video, kneel down on the ground, get a sense of how it feels on both knees, get a sense of how long it takes to maybe feel uncomfortable, how confident you feel here, how tight it feels, and also if you can, see how you go kneeling back onto your heels. Now, if you're not super confident, then maybe just have your knees a little bit wider and just see how low you can get before you feel you need to tap out. Take note of that, take note of how it feels. If you can't get all the way back, doesn't matter. It's important to take note of how you feel doing it to begin with. Because we're gonna go through the exercise called the couch stretch. Again, we'll link it up here. We've done a video on it before. We use it a lot on the channel. It's a really powerful exercise. One of the best exercises that you can do for the health and function of your legs, hips, quads specifically. But all the exercise is, is basically doing this with, on a couch or a chair. But for the purposes of this video, we're gonna place your knee into the back corner of something. So if you are having trouble kneeling, doing it on the floor is probably not gonna be your first option because it might be too progressed or too hard to do it initially. Because you wanna get some pressure on your knee in the corner with the, your shin vertical up against a surface. So here obviously it's the wall. If you're on a couch or a chair, obviously it's gonna be up higher. Your knee's gonna be on the seat with your shin up against the back of the chair. But essentially what we're doing here is we're bringing your other leg up and we're trying to straighten yourself up as far as possible. Now, if you're willing to try it on the floor, obviously put, some, uh, put a pillow or some foam or a cushion underneath your knee so this feels comfortable. Again, we're not trying to annoy the knee at all. We're just trying to feed some slack into it. So how this looks from the side essentially is you're putting your knee back into the corner of the chair and placing your leg up against the back of the chair. And the interesting thing about this is if you're doing this correctly, you're not gonna be putting pressure down directly through your kneecap. You're actually gonna be putting, if you're coming forward like this, you're actually gonna be putting pressure above the kneecap on the, the fleshy part of the knee. So this position shouldn't compress your kneecap. You should be above that. And all we're doing here is we're essentially starting in this bent over position and then coming up as far as you feel comfortable until you find some tightness in the hip. So how that looks, again, is putting your knee back into the corner, placing the other leg up, and then extending yourself upwards as far as you feel comfortable until you find some tightness here. So again, the idea that we wanna promote here is holding a stretch doesn't work, or it's not as effective as it could be, the best way to stretch anything is to find a position that feels tight, locate some of that tightness, and then tense that tightness. So I'm pushing my foot and my shin back into the wall here, or the door here. I'm making that muscle work. And what that does is it gets the brain and nervous system involved, that once I'm tensing that and then I relax, that tissue gives. So you should see an immediate response. And then what we can do after that is, once you've done that for 30 seconds to a minute, then come back onto your, your heels again, do this kneeling position to retest how it feels. So if you have to have your legs out wider to begin with, resting on your hands and coming down like this, you should hopefully feel like you can get a little bit further than you could before, or there's less discomfort there. And then when you're putting pressure through the knee, hopefully it feels a little less aggressive than it, it normally would. So, so the purpose of this exercise is to feed as much slack back into the knee as possible to give it a better environment to work with. So if you feel, in terms of pain and discomfort, there's every chance that freeing up those quads, freeing up that tissue, takes the tension out of the knee, gives it more room to breathe. 
you may feel less discomfort straight away. That's what we're looking for. Failing that, what you want to look for is it just feels looser and freer. Maybe you could go back further before it started to get sore. Maybe you could hang around there longer before it got sore. But the point is you want to look for some change because you need that confidence that doing this exercise is going to make some steady progress over time. And then you just have to hammer that exercise for a couple of days, a couple of weeks. And over the course of that time period, it should feel like it's consistently getting easier to kneel on the ground. So, so that's the first exercise. It's a really important one. Um, as I said, if your knee magically feels better after doing that exercise, just remember that you haven't improved, you know, you haven't taken away any arthritis, you haven't de-aged yourself, you know, you're not a month younger than what you were before. So the, the gains in how that position feels, how kneeling feels, is due to the mechanics of the leg. You've taken away some of the handbrakes, some of the mechanical dysfunction that is challenging an area more than it wants to be challenged. So by improving that, then you deserve to be able to experience different positions, get down on the ground easier, kneel a bit easier. And over time, you should, you deserve to see that progress. So hold me to that. Let me know in the comments below how you found the couch stretch. Let me know how kneeling feels for you. And then hopefully in a week or two, come back and let me know again to see if anything's changed. Because um, if you're doing the exercise correctly, if you're working your way through that and it's freeing you up, I'd be staggered if you didn't start to feel some improvement. But again, it's always important to know that if you do have some arthritis in there, there might be a ceiling on how good it feels. But the important thing is you don't know what that ceiling is until you start to work your way through it. There may not be a ceiling, but if there is, I can always guarantee that it's going to be better than what it currently is for you. That You can make improvements. So, so that's the first exercise. The couch stretch is really important to improve your ability to tolerate kneeling. The second thing is a similar concept where with the couch stretch, we're sort of focusing more on the musculature, the quads as they attach into the kneecap. And we can affect some of the, um, the other soft tissue and the connective tissue. But another good way to do this is to go after a lot of the, the glued down tissue around the knee. So same concept, different approach, aiming for different tissue. So what we want to do here is we often find that the tissue sort of on the, the top outside corner of the thigh. So if you draw a line down the middle, just on the outside of that, not completely out to the side, but that sort of quadrants through here, as it attaches into the kneecap, it often gets very tight and glued down and stiff, um, and it can be for a long time. So we want to basically attack that with a ball. So you can use a tennis ball, this is a lacrosse ball, um, anything that you can dig in there, you can dig your thumbs in as well if you want to, but a ball is a little bit sort of smoother, a bit easier. So you can do this two ways. You can just be sitting down watching TV, you can just have the ball in your knee, and you can just be sort of grinding and creating friction, doing frictions through that knee, trying to free up that tissue finding a spot that feels particularly tender and just working your way through that. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Again, we're trying to feed some slack into that knee. So anything that feels tight or stiff is fair game. Again, focus more so on the outside half, but feel free to explore the inside as well, the top and the inside. You may not find anything anywhere near as restricted, but make sure that there's nothing there. Double check that. So that's, that's one way that you can do it. The other way that you can do it, and this is the way that I sort of like the most, it's a little bit more brutal. It depends whether you can get down on the ground. Again, you can do this on a bed. You can do this sort of on the couch, lying on the couch. If you can get down on the ground, great. If not, it doesn't matter. You can do other versions of this to get the same response. But the idea here is that we want to roll onto that. Now, this is quite tender for a lot of people, so a tennis ball might be better for you if you're doing it this way. I want to put the other leg over the top because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bend my back leg or bend my bottom leg. So I'm compressing that tissue that's tight and I'm shearing that tissue free by bending my knee. So I'm feeding slack into that knee using movement. So again, you can't be a piece of meat, a passive piece of meat when you're trying to improve mobility. You have to incorporate the brain and the nervous system somehow. And that can be either through movement or just tensing and relaxing those muscles. So, so again, for me, this is a little bit tight, tight spot just here. I'm gonna roll onto that and get bend and flex that knee until it feels better. And then again, coming back to this test, what we should expect to see immediately is you should feel like some of that restriction, that ball of tightness is gone. And then you should feel like you can maybe go a little bit further into that position than you could before. So, and this should feel good at some point or it should feel better for some people. So, so I guess the idea that I want to promote with this is that 
please don't feel like kneeling has to be a problem forever. It's understandable that a lot of people get to a point where kneeling becomes something that makes them feel uncomfortable. So you just avoid doing it and that's understandable. But if you come to this video and you're hoping to improve how, you, how kneeling feels, there's some really simple ways that you can do that. So if you, know, if you value playing on the ground with your grandkids, if you're just someone who has to kneel all day for work or you're, you're doing it for whatever reason, uh, it's really important that the, the tissue quality that feed into the knee is good. Um, so that you're minimizing the impact of that that load through the knee. So, so hopefully that was really helpful. Um, if it was, let us know by leaving a like below. Um, again, please comment, let me know how you're going. I wanna make sure that I'm helping and that you can see that progress and, and that these concepts make sense. Uh, and as always, if you're new to the channel, if you like what we put out, please consider subscribing. Obviously it helps you sort of be alerted to when new content comes out, which comes out sort of daily, uh, you know, every second day. Um, but it also helps support the channel. So um, I would really love these videos to get out to as many people as possible because there's a lot of concepts that we're promoting here that just don't seem very well known and they're not difficult. You know, they're pretty straightforward, but for some reason in the industry, uh, we're not necessarily thinking about it in too much depth. Or if we are, we're sort of thinking about something and how it works over here when a lot of the reality of that situation is probably over here. So we can do a really good job of optimizing this but potentially we're missing the bigger picture at play. So, so if you'd like to join us on that journey, please consider subscribing below. Um, and as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. Hopefully it was useful and uh, we'll see you in the next one.